everyone. Uh, this is Nelly here from SF Cryptocurrency Devs. We just had an amazing talk from Enigma, and I'm here with John to ask him a few questions. Welcome, John. Thank you. Thanks for having us. It was a very fun session upstairs. Lots of questions. I have a few more for you. Yeah. Uh, so first question is, tell us a little bit about how you got into blockchain and how did you end up joining Enigma? Um, great question. So I got into uh, Bitcoin. Uh, actually, I was in between uh, my consulting gig and business school and uh, was working on a different startup, a mobile um, iOS uh, application idea and met this friend of mine for, uh, for feedback one day who had started his own company. Mm -hmm. And then after like 40 minutes into like asking questions, like I, I need to say, some th say something, have you like, do you know how Bitcoin works? And like I had some Bitcoin at the time, but like I had no idea. So I could just read that. Uh, and then I read this, this was like May, I'm sorry, yeah, May 14 or, mm -hmm. or April 2014. And then uh, I was like, holy shit, this is so, like this was the most intellectually stimulating thing right. I've read. So when I started business school at MIT uh, in 2014, I really made, my, made, like, made it a priority for me to learn more about uh, Bitcoin, and then there was like, a lot of things like, going on at MIT at the or time. DCI, right? The right? Yeah. Uh, the DCI was not formed back then, but there was the Bitcoin Club, uh, mm -hmm. which was run by undergrads. We had our friend Dan Elitzer. Yep. <laughs> he was a great resource to me. And then uh, through Media Lab, I uh, met my current co-founder, Guy. Uh, and then that's how I got, yeah, how I got in, involved in the scene. So what got you really excited about the idea behind Enigma? And for those who don't know, uh, Enigma is a protocol built on Ethereum, is a second layer protocol. And what's really cool about it, it really fulfills the promise of uh, privacy and scale uh, on Ethereum and specifically for smart contracts rather than just data. So uh, what I mean, I met Guy, who I currently work with, uh, in 2015 and um, and then at the time I was like just trying to understand wrap my head around Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum was like, I think it was pre-Ethereum public sale. Um, and his idea around uh, like, if you really, really simplify, it was like, you're able to do machine learning on data that you don't see. Mm -hmm. And to me, like having done, um, like in my consulting days, a lot of work that like, you know, uh, there's firewalls between organizations right. um, and that like, you can share data and it's like a pain in the back or neck or whatever uh, so to me like the idea was like was powerful beyond just like Bitcoin right um, and then like the more you think about it like uh, it became apparent to me that like to really achieve full decent decentralization right. like the vision where like you know everyone um, uh, basically presents this as a new internet you need to have privacy so that's kind of like what resonated with me right. very early on and that's what got me very very excited uh, about Enigma I was I remember like reading the articles on Wired in 2015. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god, like I'm so happy for guys. Like he's gonna do amazing right. things. So it's like, it was a very like nice, uh, you know, a, a twist of fate to uh, right. to join him as a co-founder down the road. So what got you super excited about it? What are some of the biggest use cases that you see for the Enigma protocol? So I think at this point we're as as you mentioned, um, we're we're working with um, the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, and, and we're trying to enable um, DAP developers um, or projects on Ethereum to, um, to, to enable things, to, to, to do things that they can't do on Ethereum right now mm -hmm. due to privacy. I think, like, I don't want to talk about like what this can do in like five to 10 years, cause like sure. that's like too fluffy. Yeah. Uh, but things that excite me today is like, um, I, I mentioned governance, like voting is an issue, right? Uh, right? Votes can be bought contractually, that's a, that's a danger. Um, also, currently, the way you uh, hide votes is through mm -hmm. the system called commit trivial, where you first commit the hash of your vote, and at a future time you have to reveal it. So right. you have to do two transactions to achieve one, right. which is not a good user experience. Right. Um, so like things around governance in general, like really really excite me because it's basically applicable to all the blockchains and mm -hmm. it's happening right now. Uh, I'm really excited about gaming because. Mm -hmm. Usually gaming, uh, I mean, if you look at CryptoKitties, like these are going to be the first use cases that actually right. get traction. And there are games that, um, that store certain things in, in like, Amazon Web Services. Sure. And to us, like breaking those centralization, points of centralization is, is a big step. And I think we will be doing 
uh, work on governance, enabling games um, over the next couple of years. I'm really excited about the idea of a privacy preserving decentralized exchange because mm -hmm. that way you can avoid some problems like front running, etc. Uh, but also you could like um, have transaction privacy, which yeah. I think is, is, is relevant. And if people may be like, oh, but that's bad, but you could still do like, you know, uh, some sort of KYC on, on the addresses that are allowed right, to transact, right. but still hide what they're doing. So yeah. I think there are like, these like little improvements over the existing ecosystem. Um, the idea of doing like, like federated learning, those kind of machine learning applications is, is very, very interesting. But I think they will come later because like there's no like data to do machine learning on right now. On, on the on like on the, on the decentralized world. Yeah, and so you mentioned to me earlier, and we're going to dive a little deeper, yeah. that your co-founder did multi-party computation. And when I was reading up about the protocol earlier, you guys used something called TEE, uh, trusted execution yeah. environment. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that is, how that uh, guarantees security, and why you guys ended up going in this route? Sure, sure. Um, I think so. Basically, there there are two ways of doing this. Like one is software-based encryption methods. There is um, multi-party computation, homomorphic encryption, uh, the zero knowledge uh, oh, yeah. uh, protocols, uh, and then there is a hardware where, where you basically do computations in a in a trusted environment where right. you cannot cannot be technically tampered with. Um, the reason why okay, our research has been on MPC and it it actually um, I think it's like one of the top ten downloaded papers in the in mm -hmm. the ecosystem or cited. Uh, our mission is to enable true decentralization yeah. and for that we think privacy is a big part. The reason why we chose TEs to start with is because TEs allow us to do more towards that mission mm -hmm. in a shorter time frame. Um, that said, we're not made to the idea of TEs. There are ways in which we're looking to use multi-party computation to make the TE-based network uh, more robust. It's so basically like, combine it, right? Like step one, step two. Yes, yeah, so, so, but even with step one, like you can do things like randomness generation, key management. We can do these like critical portions of the network with, with uh, MPC, and that's what we're doing. And eventually we're, um, we're like the MPC based secret contracts, which is our smart contract is still right. on the roadmap. And we're also researching ways in which we can um, merge uh, research topics like bulletproof and MPC to make MPC just a more robust solution. Totally. And so you guys just went live on testnet? Uh, it's been like two months. Okay. Um, what can we do on it? So right now what you can do is like, the, the current version is um, slightly limited compared to what we just uh, described uh, recently. You can um, write a, it's, it's a, it's a developer environment, but you can write a secret contract where uh, you can offload some functions from a, from a solitude and smart contract into the Enigma network that could be like tallying results for a vote, uh, that could be like, you know, bidding in an auction, like right. hidden bid, etc. Um, so it's like stateless computations where um, where you can run these uh, these contracts. But I can take a, an existing application, right, and then yeah, so leverage your the, protocol to exactly. make it more secure and more private. So Aragon has a voting contract. We yeah. can run the Aragon voting contract on, uh, on a simulation environment. Uh, and then we can have the tally function and the input function run on Enigma, which means no one sees what the inputs are, and then the tally is done and then results are submitted. That's right. awesome. And so for you guys, um, what kind of talent are you looking for? How can one participate? How can one get a job, help out, do research? What are yeah. you looking for? We're always open to like great people who are excited about what we're doing. Um, there is a lot of like smart contract development yeah. work that can um, facilitate what like the protocol work is is like building uh, because like these like we, we recently built sample secret voting contract sample secret auction contracts so, like there's a lot that's of that's all things. available right on uh, yeah it's GitHub, all it's yeah. all open source on our github um, but also we're looking for people who can come in and help on the protocol level um, hopefully in a couple of months our documentation will be at a stage where we could have uh, open source contribution to the protocol. Yeah. And then obviously cryptographers are hard to find, but um, we're always um, like, you know, if, if MPC is an area that we're, we're looking to um, hire in, uh, if the right people come up, For sure. uh, we're, we're looking to support 
research in, in certain NPC related topics, certain um, zero knowledge related topics, especially we're interested in uh, understanding more about how bulletproofs can work with yeah. uh, NPC to um, to make certain things more robust when they like come into a network. Um, yeah, I mean, I think when I look at most people we hired, they usually came through the community saying, hey, like, I'm really yeah. interested. Um, and then they worked for a bit uh, on a certain problem, not not too long, but like, and then like it came to a point where like, okay, right. like we like working with you, yeah. we like working with us, let's make this formal. Join us, yeah, yeah. awesome. So lots of opportunities uh, to join Enigma. John, thank you so much for coming here with your team. It was super exciting to have yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of course. Awesome.